Hi, Founder fans. Jason here, and today's founder is George Walton. George Walton was a Declaration of Independence signer from Georgia, so his life story is very interesting, especially to those of us investigating the American Revolution. So let's talk a little bit about him. George Walton was actually born in Virginia, and he grew up there and became a carpenter in Virginia, but he saw opportunity in Georgia and relocated there where he studied the law and became, among other things, a lawyer. Uh, now, Georgia, I will remind you, was only founded as a colony in 1735, so just 40 years before the American Revolutionary War actually broke out. Uh, that's when Georgia was started, so it was still very sparsely populated, even for the time, even compared to other colonies. So, uh, George Wallen shows up and says, hey, this is a great opportunity. Again, studies, becomes a lawyer. Once he starts lawyering, well, the revolution breaks out not long thereafter. He's already become a leader of his community, and in fact, uh, Walton was appointed as an early president of the uh, uh, com not, uh, Committee of Safety, which was in charge of the revolutionary militia at the time, and he was a very quickly a radical. Now, Georgia did not send any delegates to the First Continental Congress, and actually didn't immediately send anyone to the Second Continental Congress. Lyman Hall showed up for the second session of the Second Continental Congress, and he was sent by his county, but Georgia didn't actually choose anyone to go. That being said, uh, when Georgia finally gave in and did send a representative to the Continental Congress, George Walton was among the three men sent to Philadelphia to represent Georgia. And while he was there, well, independence was voted on. Walton, as I mentioned, was a radical and did support the independence. And a month later, he signs the Declaration of Independence. But that's really only just the beginning of his story. You see, George Walton would go back to um, go back to Georgia and get involved in their precarious politics. In uh, in early Georgia, although I'm skipping ahead, I should say, first of all, after signing the Declaration of Independence, Walton joins the Georgia militia and becomes a colonel. And while he is, a, which is a big position, there's a thousand men under his command, but for a signer of the Declaration of Independence is surprisingly a, a smaller title, uh, comparatively speaking, of course. Now, Walton serves valiantly and is actually shot and wounded and then captured uh, and he's he's held in prison for over a year. Uh, luckily, his wound does heal. Uh, he's shot in the leg, and that wound does heal. But very peculiarly, he was eventually traded back to the Americans in a, a prisoner exchange. But again, as a signer of the Declaration of Independence, he committed treason. And uh, it is very shocking that he was allowed to return to the Patriot side at all. Now... Walton does not rejoin the, the fight. He actually goes into Georgia state politics. And state politics in Georgia is really fascinating. And I'm not going to get into all the minute de uh, details right now. Suffice to say, there were two factions or parties broke out during the uh, 1779 into 1780 into 1781 in Georgia politics. There were the radicals and the conservatives. Now, the conservatives were, by this point, patriots because independence had been declared. But they were really wary about, you know, Britain invading Georgia and everything like that. Uh, also, Georgia had been heavily loyalist because it was so sparsely populated leading up to and during the revolution. It was necessary to have the support of the British crown to protect them from other nations and, and Native Americans. And while most other colonies had Native Americans on their western coast, uh, Georgia also had the Seminoles down in Florida on their southern coast, which additionally was owned by Britain. Uh, and therefore, just like the North has Canada on the border and was a concern, Georgia had Florida on the border. Also, if you go to the West, uh, Georgia also had Spain on a border, who was friendly during the war, but uh, the relationship between the Patriots and Spain was always tenuous at best. So Walton finds himself in this scenario. You have the conservatives who are really hesitant for getting involved uh, with the, the, uh, uh, you know too much, and they, they want a conservative government. Walton is a leader of the radicals, and I forgot to bring him up. There he is, Walton. George Walton is a leader of the radicals, and he ends up, the conservatives take over the government, and George Walton actually kind of establishes uh, a rival government. And theoretically, you know, you can't really say this 100%, but basically, Georgia for a little bit there had two separate governments, uh, one of which Walton was essentially the leader of. Now, he does briefly become governor of Georgia, and eventually these two short-lived governments collide and become one government again, and that's great. 
Uh, and, George, and Wong spends about two months in that position, though he does go back to the Continental Congress. I will remind you, while he's away from the Continental Congress, he's replaced by his brother John, who also signs the, the Articles of Confederation. So there are two uh, Walton brothers who are signatories. Uh, so remember that name for trivia on Fridays, uh, which we usually get. Anyway, uh, George continues in this position. He returns to the Continental Congress for a little bit. Um, he comes back at, to become, he's nominated and selected as an early Chief Justice of the Georgia Supreme Court, and he spends six years as Chief Justice of Georgia. Now, he is also elected to attend the Constitutional Convention. Walton thinks that matters at home in Georgia concern him more and need his attention more than anything happening in Philadelphia. To be fair, uh, no one knew there was going to be a new Constitution written. Everyone thought they were just amending the Articles of the Confederation. No one really saw, not a lot of people saw what was coming, coming. So, unfortunately, uh, uh, Walton, who signs the Declaration, does not sign the Constitution, but he remains down there. Eventually, uh, he becomes governor for a second time for a brief period, and then he actually is sent to the uh, United States Senate. He fills a vacancy by uh, uh, Jackson. Uh, the first name escapes me, but a, a gentleman named Jackson. Uh, because Walton was in support of the Yazoo land sales, and again, not to get too into the weeds of this, but the Yazoo land sales was essentially a bunch of land in West that was taken from Native Americans during the war being given out uh, to political allies in a fairly shady manner. And uh, Walton was one of the people in support of this. Many people were, not to hate on his character too much, but uh, 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 Senator Jackson returned home and ran for governor. I think it, it's not Jesse. Was it Jesse? Uh, J uh, J something, J-U. Ah, the name's eluding me. Anyway, uh, Senator Jackson returns home and actually becomes governor of... Uh, Georgia, and in his replacement when he resigned was George Walton, who goes to replace the guy who's coming to stop what he did, uh, and he's there for about half a term, then returns home and goes back on to the Supreme Court of Georgia and spends the next 15 years of his life as a justice on the Georgia Supreme Court. So really, though he signed the Declaration of Independence uh, and was huge in creating the state of Georgia, uh, he probably should be best known as, as one of the uh, justices on Georgia Supreme Court for a total of about 21 years. Uh, so that is a brief overview of the life of George Walton, a sign of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, S, no worries. That's all right. I click the bell. YouTube doesn't want to tell you. YouTube doesn't tell you. I appreciate you coming when you can. Uh, trivia night this Friday. Uh, it happens every Friday. Uh, and this week, uh, unfortunately, we did have a guest canceled tomorrow, but there is a guest coming back on Thursday. So we have a lot to look forward to. I sure hope to see you again soon. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. And as as is saying, hit that notification bell if you want reminders uh, to learn about the American Revolution now five days a week. Thank you, and I'll be back with another Founder for You tomorrow.